How would you do acceptance testing for brachytherapy applicators? How would it differ if you were doing acceptance testing on an afterloader unit? And then what goes into commissioning a linear accelerator? So I want to dive fairly deep into the tests you'd want to do for brachytherapy applicators. So the first thing you want to measure the physical length. So you want to ensure not only is your applicator what you purchased, but that the physical length is correct. Also the diameter, if you are using any type of rings, you just want to look at the applicator in general, verify that it matches the angle, the diameter, the length, etc. You also want to look at the serial number. So stuff that may be fairly obvious when you first get it in, but it's important not to assume the manufacturer did their job well. You are commissioning this in your clinic. You need to verify every aspect. So now what you want to do is a auto radiograph, and that is going to verify the uniformity and the symmetry. So if you think of a ring, you may have a ring applicator here, again, bad drawing, and you have a channel that is coming in and it's going to go around the ring to the other side. Well, that channel may not perfectly be in the center of the ring as it goes around the applicator. And you want to verify that it is, or at least very close to that. Then you want to do a source calibration. Now this needs to be within 5% of the vendor specification. You also want to ensure the applicator's proper source placement via orthog orthogonal radiographs using, typically you do four to six X with a dummy source and a, a mechanical a function to that. And so you use a linear accelerator, you put your dumber wire in, and that's another way to verify that your channel is relatively centered and it's essentially your applicator is working the way it should. So that is for applicators. And remember, you need to do this for every single brachytherapy applicator, not just a set of them. This is the big boy test you do to verify it, that it is clinically viable. So now say you did applicators, now you get your afterloader unit. So one, again, very obvious, correct operation is huge. You want to verify it works exactly as is intended. You want to do all the rad safety checks. So ensure that there is no leakage, that all of the doors and alarms work. You want to do your source calibration and transport. You want to verify that it is working with and that all of the softwares for the TPS and the afterloader unit are accurate. They're either that your source is being decayed in the afterloader. Do you need to do it in your TPS? Are the step sizes the same or does it interpolate? A lot of details between the TPS while planning and the actual afterloader unit. You have your source positioning with the auto radiograph. That needs to be within one millimeter. And so as we mentioned with the applicator, even though maybe we verified that the channel with the dummy wire is perfectly centered in your ring, when that afterloader sends the seed in there, if somehow it doesn't follow what you would expect and it's not perfectly in the center or it doesn't reach all the way to the end of the, the catheter, you need to know that. And then finally, you need to do the source calibration with the well, well chamber. So now a linear accelerator, changing gears here, but they're all accelerators and acceptance testing uh, for or commissioning rather. And so I figure I'd throw it in. And for the accelerators, you need your percent depth doses and your TPR tables for that matter. You want to do your measured and computer generated ISO curves, and those need to agree within 2%. So normally you can start with simple plans and then move into complexity. 
to the point where you feel comfortable. You'd use a map check. You could use an arc check, portal to symmetry. There are a lot of different ways. Film film is a, a very accurate and somewhat easy way to do this. And you have hard evidence of, hey, I measured this field and here are the ISO lines and all that good stuff. So many ways you can do it, but you at least need to verify those are with an agreement. You have your MU calcs. You that, of course, you do your MU calcs, you get a number. And then when you go and irradiate that particular field, you get the same MU with your chamber. You have your MLC transmission test. So remember, there's a lot of different MLC transmissions, interleaf, interleaf, leaf end. You need to do all of those, DLG, all that good stuff. You then need to look at your penumbra. And then, of course, your TPS agreement. So quick acceptance testing, mainly for brachy. But again, you never know when the examiner is going to turn and be like, oh, let's talk about Linux now. Pretty much wherever they want the conversation to go, they will, unless you steer them one way or the other. So hopefully this helps. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Best of luck.